everybody and welcome along to the history program uh, with me Tony Brown from the Limerick Historical Society and uh, tonight we're going to again we're going to move to something different again. I hope most of you have seen some of the other um, things that we've up on, on the Limerick Historical Society uh, webpage and you'll find them anyway or you'll get them on Lear, uh, Media on YouTube if you're interested and I suppose there's a good variety of, of uh, material there. As usual, I have with me um, Tom Donovan. Tom, you're welcome to the programme anyway. Good evening, Tony. Good evening. And also tonight now we have a man that I give a bit of an introduction first while I give his name. I first met him about, God, it must be, it must be 40 years ago. <laughs> uh, I, heard him, I heard him doing a documentary on the radio, uh, on, uh, on, on RTE, a radio uh, uh, interview on Agna Crusher. And I said, who's this fellow? I said to myself, you know, and I, I, when I heard the German name, I said he'd be interesting to find out. So I checked him out anywhere, and I found out at the time he was living in Mulder Street. And uh, I took a chance in ringing him, and I got him to give a talk anywhere. Oh, God, it must be, it has to be the bones of talk the years ago, it said. He gave the first talk. And then you gave a talk to the Limerick Historic Society about three years ago. So I'd like to welcome tonight um, Joachim Fischer. Jo Johan, uh, Joachim, you're, you're welcome to the programme anywhere. Thanks very much, Tony. Now, tonight I want to talk about the same subject about, uh, I should say as well, you're from the Department of um, European Studies, is that right, in UL? Yeah, yeah, in, uh, lecturing in European Studies and uh, also in German. Mm. Yeah, and uh, uh, I, I always thought of you just in, the, in the, the German department, and I think there was never really a German department there as such. Uh, Department of Languages or School of Languages, Modern yeah. Languages, yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, but when we talk about Abner Crusher, but what I want you to talk about really is, if you don't mind, uh, we all know about the building of Abner Crusher and there's been so much talk about in Limerick over the years from children that somebody belonging to them had worked there and knew what was happening. You know, I know it's, it's getting up to 100 years ago now, but, uh, I, but when the Germans came here, Siemens, who were the big company, I mean, nowadays when you hear of Siemens, I suppose you think of vacuum cleaners, you think of uh, lots of other things when you hear the name Siemens, but they were the big contractors at the time. So when they come, just as a loaded question first, when they're coming here, when Siemens came to Ireland, first of all, taking on a thing, a huge project like Agna Crusher, a new state being formed, the amount of money it was going to cost, and it was enormous at the time. Did they think they'd be paid for all this and what was going to happen? So as they say in the best of exams, explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks very much, uh, Tony. Yes, uh, that, that's, uh, that's a very good question, a great way to start because um, uh, that's, that's really the angle that I'm interested in. And uh, because there are so many experts on Ardna Crusher, on the Shannon scheme in Ireland, they know far more about it than, than uh, I do. Um, and most of them are engineers. That's their particular uh, interest, of course, because it has been so important in the uh, development of uh, um, engineering and uh, technology, uh, uh, the, the economic development, uh, um, also, the, the Shannon scheme also impacted on the uh, economic development. But my particular uh, interest is the uh, Irish-German connection. And uh, as Tony said, I'm um, lecturing in German as well. And I, um, I did a, a, a good bit of research on the uh, Irish perception of Germany uh, during that period in particular, mm -hmm. uh, between... 1890 and 1940, that, that's the area that I, I was particularly interested in. And the Shannon scheme is right bang in the middle there. And it played a, um, uh, a huge role, as I said, in the development of the uh, newly founded uh, uh, Free State, but it's also very important in the, the context of uh, German-Irish relations. And, uh, and uh, it is, uh, important, perhaps, uh, to put it into uh, context, as uh, Tony said, the Free State had uh, just been uh, founded in uh, 1922, at the end of 1922, and um, uh, around the same time, um, uh, Thomas McLaughlin went to Berlin to uh, 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 Siemens, uh, and uh, Siemens, I think, um, saw the potential in him. 
uh, they um, uh, he uh, he went to their their office in London first after doing his degree in in uh, Galway, and uh, he probably very quickly uh, uh, gave them. Um, a little bit of a, uh, an idea about what is possible uh, in Ireland. He had done some research. He was an electrical engineer and uh, he had done some uh, research on the, uh, the, um, the possibility of uh, uh, hydroelectricity and the uh, uh, calculations had been made uh, much, much earlier about the potential of the uh, Shannon for energy uh, uh, generation. And he came to Siemens and uh, told them relatively early uh, um, on uh, about um, the, 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 the possibility of generating uh, uh, energy uh, by means of the, the, the Shannon and effectively uh, um, provide electricity for the, uh, the free state. And the other uh, important thing that he told Siemens right from the, the begin, uh, from the start was he had very good connections. Yeah, he knew McGilligan, who was the new uh, Minister for uh, Industry and Commerce, uh, and he also um, had, as, as, as far as I, I can recall, he, um, uh, he had met uh, Cosgrave, the um, uh, president of the, uh, the, the Free State. And uh, um, because of that, uh, Siemens, thought, uh, Siemens uh, thought, we'll try out this guy. And he brought him to, uh, to Berlin. And, uh, had, had this been done anywhere else, was there... Had Siemens been involved in any other one in Germany or on the continent or England or anywhere? Exactly. I was just about to say that because uh, 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 Siemens had uh, built a number of hydroelectric power stations in Germany. And uh, I have a sometimes uh, show a PowerPoint presentation. I have a few images of uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, of um, hydroelectric power stations on the Ruhr in uh, Germany, but also uh, uh, in the Black Forest uh, and uh, in, in other countries, and they actually look very similar. So uh, Siemens had uh, done a, uh, um, were in the business of hydroelectricity and also um, uh, in electrification, in rural electrification in Pomerania, uh, they were the driving force um, behind effectively electrifying that whole uh, 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 large rural area of Pomerania, which uh, um, then um, McLaughlin realized was in many ways uh, similar uh, to <laughs> Ireland. Uh, and he studied this, this in detail. Uh, so while he was uh, in, in uh, Berlin throughout the, uh, the, um, the 1923, and um, he went to, uh, back home uh, around Christmas 1923 and he met members of the, uh, the, the, the government and um, uh, particularly um, uh, McGillian uh, was uh, um, really excited about uh, this, this project. But of course, um, uh, putting it into its historical context, one was, one problem of course was finances, which uh, Tony talked about. Um, effectively, well, that only transpired later, but uh, the cost of it were astronomical. If we put, uh, put it into uh, today's, uh, um, not figures, but percentages, uh, the, 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 the scheme was, in the end, it was to cost uh, 5.2 million pounds. And uh, the total annual budget uh, for 1925, uh, was 25 million, you know? So it, it was 20 percent of the annual budget of the free state, unbelievable. Uh, no government, I think, would dare to do this nowadays. Uh, they, they wouldn't even get the money, you know? What, what, uh, uh, what, what do you think, Tom, of the contract now, for example? If they uh, had a, how, how could they have a contract with, it, with a, a new fledging government, a new, you know, it seems very- was, was there bonds, was there bonds or, or, you know, promissory notes? Like, what was, the, what was their, their guarantee of getting the money? Like Tony said at the start. Um, I, I don't know en enough about uh, the finances, um, mm. but it, it certainly must have been uh, very shaky. I am yeah. saying that because um, the, um, there is a, and I, I mentioned it to uh, Tony before, uh, there is an interesting novel about the, the Shannon scheme written in German. It was uh, never translated. 
And uh, a lot of it is fictional. You know, they, the, uh, mm. the author changes the story quite dramatically because uh, in, in, in this novel, it is all the idea of a German engineer, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. equivalent of McLaughlin only plays a minor role, so it is uh, mm. quite nationalist in, in its perspective. But um, what is interesting uh, uh, about this novel is it's quite extensive uh, about the discussions within CMEX. Uh, mm. uh, and uh, um, and he, he obviously had access to uh, um, um, documentation about the scheme. It's very detailed. And uh, um, uh, this was the, uh, the area that Siemens was most worried about, that they wouldn't get the money, yeah? Yeah. that uh, the, uh, the free state uh, could ultimately uh, not find the money and uh, would effectively go bankrupt. Yeah, they, yeah. they were uh, really worried about that. You know, um, now in the end, we'll probably come come to that later. In in the end, they did get the money, although Siemens lost heavily, massively on on uh, the scheme, um, and uh, it uh, con uh, and unfortunately for Siemens, which they didn't know at the time, uh, these losses fell into uh, 1929. Uh, which was the uh, the Wall Street crash? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was an absolute financial disaster for uh, for Siemens, and it took them uh, at least two years to recover to get into black figures again. Yeah, yeah. Largely yeah. because of the, uh, the 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 losses. Just once again to put that into perspective, uh, as I said, the uh, scheme was to cost um, uh, 5.2 million pounds. The losses of Siemens were in the region of one million. Yeah, so. <laughs> Was there any, I often wonder as well for myself, was there any aggravation between, first of all, the Germans coming in here about six years, five, six years after the war, 1918, mm -hmm. right, with England? Were there any kind of um, stops put in, the, put in the way of the Germans getting involved with Ireland or Ireland getting involved with Germany? Uh, on the, the German side or? Um... No, on the English side, but the English, the English side. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, certainly. Um, and not only on the on the English side. Uh, obviously, the uh, um, uh, the English or the British papers were very worried about this. You know, about getting a, a German company right on on their doorstep. But it wasn't only uh, it wasn't only in Britain. If you look at the early commentary in the Irish Times, which was the uh, uh, which uh, was effectively the um, uh, the voice of Anglo Ireland. Uh, um, uh, there were uh, exactly the same uh, uh, worries expressed and uh, the Irish en engineering profession uh, were also had their, their noses uh, out of joint, you know, for, uh, uh, because if, they, if there had been connections before, it would have been with Britain as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they didn't like uh, all these Germans coming in here and telling Irish engineers how to do their job, you know, and... Uh, so there, 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 were, um, a, there was a, a lot of debate and it probably, it, um, uh, it was because of uh, the, the McGilligan's uh, enthusiasm and uh, his insistence uh, that uh, if the free state wanted to show that it was economically independent, it had to uh, show this in a big way, right? It had to, uh, it had to be done in one, um, well, not only, but also in one big project yeah. that showed that they were serious and they could do it, you know? Uh, and they also realized, of course, which is uh, in the 1920s, it, it, was, uh, um, uh, it was even more obvious than it is now, economic development um, could only happen with electricity. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This was the, the way it was going. Well, well, it's a great advantage just to, uh, to finish that point the great advantage, of course, was um, that it was renewable energy. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, Ireland was becoming increasingly independent of, of uh, Irish coal, coal which uh, was the um, of, of, of British coal, which was largely used to uh, uh, create energy, uh, and um, uh, and that they, they, so so they 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 could really show that they were serious about um, building. Um, a, uh, an economic and independent uh, uh, economic, relatively economic, uh, eco economically independent um, uh, free state. Right. And uh, the other uh, advantage was uh, that it was clean energy. And even then, 
um, the, uh, uh, the horror vision of many people in Ireland uh, would have been the industrial centers of Britain. Yeah, the, the dirt of Liverpool, Manchester, uh, and so on. Uh, going back to the 19th century and the memories of uh, Irish people uh, working in coal mines and, uh, and all that. And this scheme seemed to allow a relatively clean uh, energy basis for economic development. So on, on many fronts, this was a very attractive project. And you reckon, was there any alternative to Siemens? Were they the only contractors that could carry out this work? Or was there anybody else offered as an alternative? No. You know, this, this given, was, given the opposition uh, to Germany. The, the, um, uh, whether a British company could have done it, I, I'm not so sure yeah. about it. You know, mm. uh, But effectively, um, Siemens were the only ones bidding. Yeah, there, there, there were no other bids. Uh, uh, mm. uh, Siemens was invited to bid for the scheme, uh, and uh, this was the only uh, project on the table. It was then uh, handed yeah. out to international experts who mm. bid for the project. You know, yeah. that's. Uh, that's well, the, 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 sorry, Tom. Do you want to say something, Tom? No, no. I'm just saying that it wasn't all negative. I know it cost a lot of money, but the benefits uh, as regards employment. Um, mm. You know, people travel from all over the country to oh, yeah. get jobs there and, you know, to hear stories. Well, well I was going to say, first of all, the size. Was it, who, who picked the site? Was it McLaughlin that picked the site at Avna Crusher? Uh, and well, how did you discover this site of uh, the fall, of the, the, the actual fall of the water? Oh, that's, uh, that, that, well, the, um, as far as I know, the, uh, the figures or the calculations had been made for that stretch of the Shannon. But why exactly Arna Crusher? Tom, maybe you you know, I'm, I'm no, not so sure no. about uh, just, for just, technological reasons, I presume this is yeah. where the uh, the best fall could be generated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fall yeah. Of the water, yeah. Well, obviously, that's in the name, Arna Crusher, as an explanation. Obviously, it's about some height, you know, with the, with the water coming down, you know. Yeah. Anyway, but having said that, what about employment then? About German employees, who did they want? Who did Siemens want to bring? I had this. Did they did they mind? Had they their own expertise? In other words, traveling over with them. Do you know how many yeah. came with them? I don't mean laborers. Or I mean expertise. Yeah, largely skilled craftsmen, in particular yeah. engineers, uh, uh, engineers, but also carpenters, uh, um, mechanics, uh, fitters, uh, all. Uh, even, the, even as far back as then, uh, German uh, industrial training was quite good, was very advanced, yeah, you, you, uh, yeah and, and, um, um, and the engineering skills uh, to build such a huge project just weren't available in Ireland, you know, so, uh, so the, these were uh, uh, largely the people uh, brought over, and of course Siemens brought their own equipment, like uh, yeah. uh, um, engines, uh, um, um, locomotive engines, and then uh, they brought the drivers as well, you could, could op operate them. But having said that, and uh, Tom, you probably know more about it than I do, they, they trained uh, a lot of Irish workers as well, yeah. even for uh, um, skilled per, uh, uh, positions, you know, and, yeah. uh, uh, but there are, there is also a, a lot of commentary um, uh, in, in letters and commentaries home uh, to, to Berlin, um, that uh, they um, they found it difficult uh, to train I Irish people in uh, in the time that was available uh, yeah. uh, because they were they were on massive uh, uh, there, there, there was a massive pressure to finish the, the project because they had contracted uh, mm. into a uh, a four year project uh, and uh, if they ran over time uh, uh, there penalties. were penalties to be paid yeah. you know? so uh, they yeah. were they were really caught and then of course. Uh, um, uh, it started with a strike. You know, this was uh, a yeah. very serious problem for us. Do you reckon they weren't doing the children's hospital in Dublin, isn't it? Sorry? Mm -hmm. They weren't building the children's hospital in Dublin. Could <laughs> 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 be finished by now. <laughs> anyway, Let's see how that goes, you know. But it's an interesting <laughs> parallel, perhaps, you know, in terms but of it, the size, it you know. Fascinating. A cousin of mine. Mary Brown, she went out there as a child and what she picked up were a few German walls. She had a few, <laughs> a few German walls she had from all the amount of Germans that came over at the time, you know. But it must have been a tremendous sight out there. 
you can see there are a few film clips of it shown from yeah. time to time. Yeah. And yet the people that work there between Irish and Germans, yeah. you know, yeah. and the conditions but, were horrendous. But I mean, the, other, the, other, the other side of it was when, when the work's finished, you had a huge amount of unemployed people. I remember mm. J, the late J.J. Kennelly telling me his father came from Ballyhahill in West Limerick into work. Mm. And he was lucky he got a job as a gardener afterwards when he was laid off. But a lot of people had to emigrate. They had no work. Mm. You know, they, they went from feast to famine. They went mm. from, from having a, a living wage and then it stopped. It was over. You know. but, uh, Tom, the other side is perhaps true as well. This unemployment mm. would probably have happened earlier oh, yeah. for them. You oh, know, yeah. uh, like, yeah. like uh, uh, yeah. when, they, when the scheme started, there was massive un unemployment. Oh, yeah. and so we're coming out of a civil war. Like, we're coming mm, out of a yeah, civil yeah. war. The exactly. country's economy was in a tatter. So yeah. it was. I mean, it just that those people probably would have been in England or America four years earlier. It's just it. It, it stayed the execution, you know. The, yeah, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, but the but something that hasn't been, I suppose, that I didn't think about was the the knock on, you know, the training and the expertise that came in. And the, even though in a, a short time, I'm sure a lot of skills were picked up on the building of Anna which mm -hmm. could be used for, for generations afterwards, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Apocalypse, for example. There were people I know, I've heard over the years about my grandfather trained as a carpenter with the Germans and that's how mm. he took up the trade. And there were mm. various things, especially carpentry now, mm. that people hadn't a clue about. So mm. these, we said mm. these Germans came mm. over and they had to train the people because they needed them as well. Mm. But it's really, I'm fascinated when I think of the amount of people that yeah. worked there. And the yeah. diggers, they'd know JCBs, but they yeah. had a kind of a JCB, you know, yeah. and just the work. It must have been no health and safety. It must have been. It must have been unreal. It's yeah. Yeah. You know. uh, like, like if you um, uh, if you think about the rural environment at, at the time, you know, uh, most people had never seen anything like this, and uh, yeah. and there was. Um, uh, it was. A, it became a kind of a tourist attraction. Oh, uh, this, uh, yeah. yeah. This uh, mm. uh, there are cigarette papers, you know, little uh, yeah. pictures in cigarette and, cigarette boxes and Keating, about it. Keating you know? the artist, uh, Keating oh, the artist came down yeah. and did yeah. paintings there. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. But they went by bus. There's a bus trip out there. Mm. I was there from the city out mm. to see the walk, mm. and I'm sure most of the people thought this was a kind of a hair brain thing. This mm. this will never yeah. be done. You know, that we'll have we'll have light in the house. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, yeah. I said so far fest, you know. But the amount of Germans, a lot of Germans came over. Yes, yeah. You 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 get different figures. Uh, but um uh, uh Mike Mc, Mc, McCarthy's book, yeah. uh, Mike McCarthy's Mike McCarthy, book is yeah. very, very interesting. Goodness, uh, yeah. Because he actually gives uh, seven uh, um, eight, over eight hundred names, right? Now um there, there is a long list of, of the, the Germans who worked here. Um uh, now they weren't all here at the same time, you know. Yeah. Uh, I understand that the height, uh, at the um, the highest employment was about four five hundred uh, uh, Germans, and then another four thousand five hundred uh, uh, Irish workers uh, working on the um, the headrays. Um, but uh, uh, five thousand people working on a, on a building site. That, it's just even now. This yeah. this is a big project. This is a massive mm. project, you know, um, mm. and. Uh, and obviously uh, um, fascinating the, the machinery as well. Uh, so it, uh, yeah, it was, it was a, mm. um, a a major event at the time. And, yeah. um, um, but it, it did a lot. It did a lot of, for. And you said earlier for the conference of a new state. You know, yeah, yeah. And I think um, they realised that that you know, and it was a statement. You know, making yeah. a statement as yeah. you know, independent. As you say not burning British coal. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you you mentioned there in the correspondence back to Germany. Was there any say any any anti-German feeling coming like the, the, you know uh, from the workers? Not I'm, I'm, it's not not political now, but yeah, uh, just on the basis of they're coming over taking our jobs, even though they couldn't do the jobs. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the the uh, uh, um, the most uh, um, explicit. Objection on that score came from mm. um, um, Sinn Féin, you know, yeah. who were obviously still boycotting the, uh, the the parliament and made exactly that point. You know, we have foreigners coming in here, yeah. um, 
and uh, um, and uh, Ireland is, uh, is going to become not English but potentially uh, German, uh, yeah. and uh, that's that's uh, um, just as bad. And um, uh, so so that, that that argument was made, and there there are also stories in the papers. Uh, uh, McCarthy um, uh, yeah. has a good few of them, you know, where. Uh, Irish workers were uh, jostled off the pavements, and uh, mm. uh, there, there was probably drinking and the usual tensions that yeah. uh, um, yeah. come yeah. when uh, when foreigners, in large numbers, uh, yeah. arrive in a, a relatively small place mm. uh, like Limerick. But the other side, of course, is true as well. There were also a good few marriages, you know, uh, yeah. and, uh, and there yeah. is a very interesting story of, uh, um, because. Yeah. Mm, sorry. And the big shell is that for, for, for sleeping in that. Yeah. That's yeah. one of those that I saw, whether it's still in situ or not, I don't know, was out in Glen Stahl. Mm. Stahl had one of those out yeah. in, the, in, the, in the yard. One, did you ever see one of them, Tom? The big shell is that. Yeah. I, was, I, I, I've seen pictures of them, yeah. The hot, yeah. yeah. Glorified shed, really, yeah. the other one. Yeah. You know? But they mm. were the conditions. And there were lots of those on the sides. Yeah. Because you forget, these people must have been working, especially when it was done in four years. In the summertime, they must have been working nearly all night, well, up to when it got dark, anyway. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, Tony, you've probably seen the pictures of uh, some of the houses for the uh, the top layer of the German engineers. Yeah. Yeah. They were very impressive, you know, and mm. that, that this sort of thing generated tensions that uh, is understandable, you know, because the... Uh, the difference was so stark. Now, it wouldn't have been the same for all German workers, you know, mm. some of them were uh, obviously uh, living in huts as well, you know, but uh, if you to take the extreme ends, uh, uh, Irish laborers effectively sleeping in pigsties because there wasn't yeah. enough, uh, enough accommodation for them. And then on the other hand, these uh, relatively well-off uh, German engineers, mm. big houses with families and, and uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's uh, you, you can understand. You, 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 you had you had that in uh, generating tensions. You had that. I mean, that divide was there. It, it wasn't as German. I remember reading recently about McBurney's a big store in Limerick, and the uh, we said the management staff had their own canteen, and the mm. the drapers' assistants and the workers were down the rat mm. infested mm. cellar. So mm. you had the executive canteen, for want of a better word, and you had the so. Yeah. But here you had a, a nationality thrown in. The, mm. the, you know that the, the, those Germans are up there having a good time. We were down here, mm. you know. So that, that kind of a divide came in then, mm. you know. Mm. The, when Krupp's first came to Limerick, uh, above and under Oxford Road, mm. they had their own houses built. Mm. Yeah, and like that again, as you said, a lot of people said, "Look at the lovely houses they have. Mm. They had beautiful. Oh God, it should never have been destroyed at a stage." Mm. Mm. That, in this place now, they have an LD store and there's something mm. else uh, that's mm. where the houses were. And there were about, I think there were about 12 houses, mm. security behind big wall inside, mm. with no business going in there. Mm. And they were built for the heads, we'd say, of crops when they first came to the brick. Mm. They were left now as a security van, uh, mm. I think. Mm. But you went in, the factory was to, to, to your left, and mm. all the houses were on a beautiful little small. Mm. Mm. Small estate built mm. for the crops work, mm. the yeah. top mm. workers, we say, who were Germans. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them stayed in Limerick. And mm. I, know, I know a few of their descendants now in Limerick, and mm. their yeah. fathers and grandfathers mm. worked in crops and mm. had one of these houses. Mm. But there were, remember the houses, Tom, inside the crops? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where Aldi is now, and uh, there's a few yeah. other. There, yeah. you know. I was never, I was never in them just to see them from the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How did you drive in? You, you had no business yeah. going there, you know, really. Yeah. No. On, on the, the the question of inter-ethnic tensions or uh, tensions between uh, groups, what is also quite interesting is uh, if you uh, read the documentations, also the uh, newspapers at the time, there were even bigger tensions uh, between the Irish-speaking yeah. uh, uh, labourers from the Iron Islands, for example, yeah. Yeah. and they were. Uh, criticized because they didn't speak English, you know, they didn't yeah. speak English. So the, the and in, in fact, the biggest 
brawls, if you like, you know, happened between these two groups, as far yeah. as I, I could see in the, in, in the newspaper, which is actually quite interesting. It wasn't the Germans given out to that, that uh, they did yeah. speak English. It was but, uh, the, uh, the, I, I think it was kind of, you know? but even in, even in, in, in London and Liverpool and Manchester, yeah. there was, uh, the Irish fought amongst themselves and it was like different uh, provinces. And mm. I think the problem in Limerick was they couldn't understand how people from Mayo would come down and probably mm. work for less money. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, like there was a lot of things thrown in, not, not just the language. Uh, I mean, there was Germans there as well. They didn't speak the language. That didn't cause a problem. But the, like the fact that people were coming from far away and taking mm. their jobs, you know, yeah. probably working for less than what they would work for mm. or working longer hours. Mm. Like, like You have those complaints now about uh, workers coming from abroad. And because they're so eager for work, they'll work for less. And absolutely, you know, it's yeah. it's it's eternal. It's a yeah. it's a constant. You know, it's, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, but, one uh, yeah. Uh, one interesting thing about the uh, the Germans is, and I uh, the numbers uh, appear to be larger uh, larger than uh, is uh, usually um, that you read about usually. And uh, I said uh, there there were eight hundred different names. And recently, I. Um, I was uh, given a few postcards, uh, um, uh, which workers say, well, in this, uh, in the last uh, uh, instance, um, uh, there were two women uh, uh, writing back to their friends in Germany. Uh, and because some of the workers came over with, uh, uh, their, um, with their women. And, um, and the names, uh, even of the men, were not listed in McCarthy's, uh, uh, in McCarthy's list, you know? Yeah. So um, it is well possible uh, that either there is another list, you know, or that yeah. the numbers were, were e even bigger than that, you know, uh, and uh, uh, um, so well, it's as, really as, you said, as you said earlier, you know, there was no constant list. I mean, people came and went, so yeah. that list could be a particular point in time, and mm. some of those workers might have gone back, and some others come over. So mm. you know, it, I, I think it would be next to impossible to keep to get a. a an exhaustive list of uh, all the workers, absolutely. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, um, my my impression is that uh, a good few of them came from southern Germany, uh, which uh, yeah. surprises me because uh, the um, Siemens was obviously located in Berlin, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, they also had a strong presence in Munich, where still the headquarters uh, are, yeah. and uh, uh, maybe that is the w reason why a good few of them came from southern Germany. Yeah, yeah. it'd be an interesting study to see how mm. they recruited the workers, you know, mm. was, was it through the, I, I presume it was through newspapers, sorry, sorry. But German workers, did they recruit mm. German workers to come here? Or did yeah. they, it's so, how to explain to you, did they want to come here or were they coming from part of Siemens? Like in other words, did you get laborers from, from Germany to come here? Uh, well, I, I, as uh, companies uh, companies still do do it, you know, they 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 have their employees, and uh, then whether they were given options to work abroad, I'm I'm not so sure, you know. Mm. But uh, um, maybe maybe a good few of them uh, seem to be excited about the prospects, you know, of yeah. uh, um, yeah. seeing something different, seeing seeing the world, you know, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, it may have been. Um, Quite interesting for them. And, and there's no indication that anybody was forced to come here. Yeah. yeah. And but you yeah. mentioned you mentioned the the, the the Wall Street crash in 1929, mm. which is only shortly after the. Mm. I think 26 was when the Kershaw finished, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 29 was when it finished. Oh, 29. Yeah, 26. Uh, 25 yeah. to 29. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's amazing that Siemens actually um, uh, survived. You know the, the 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 lack of lack of payment from the Irish yeah. government and the Wall Street crash. You know it, it, exactly. Uh, but uh, the, the the both sides are are true. On the on the one hand, they did lose heavily on this particular project, but on the strength of it, uh, as a, a proper, it was a major propaganda uh, coup yeah. at the time before the Hoover Dam. This was actually the biggest power uh, uh, hydroelectric power station for a short while, for one year in the world. Yeah, yeah, and it was Siemens built it, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and what is also interesting, even if you um, go into today's uh, uh, Siemens website, uh, and I, I just mm. uh, look, I 
did it last year. And uh, there was a, um, a description of a big project, which Siemens was just about to start in Egypt, also mm. hydroelectric power station. And, uh, and even uh, so uh, very recent, and even there uh, in presenting this proje uh, project and probably even to the, the Egyptian government, they mentioned Arna Krusha, right? Yeah. Uh, to show what tradition they had yeah. in this area. Yeah. You know? So it still matters to Siemens yeah. uh, as, a, uh, as a, uh, an achievement uh, and as, um, to, as, a, as a marketing instrument, you know? Mm. Uh, so and, uh, so in, in that sense, Siemens uh, uh, very soon afterwards, <laughs> was... very well out, out of it, and just the, the, the final point in uh, mm. 1939, oh, okay, we're, we're uh, talking about the Nazi era, the, the special time, mm. nevertheless, in 1939, Siemens was the, uh, the biggest, biggest uh, electric company in the world, you know, yeah. even bigger than General Electric's, you know, mm. 187,000 uh, uh, workers. And was it General, was, was General Electric did the Hoover Dam? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as far as but, I but but have Siemens have Siemens done many hydroelectric? You know, you mentioned Egypt, but post uh, the Crusher, have they done many? Um, yeah, as mm. uh, as as far as I know, there there are a good few. You know, you can yeah uh, yeah they but, but that, uh, there weren't um, probably even for Siemens. Uh, um, Arden Crusher was a big project, you know, yeah. even compare, yeah. uh, comparing it to the ones they built in Germany. It, it yeah. was their biggest one, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. uh, um, uh, nowadays, of course, it's, the, oh, yeah. it's not a major. Uh, but it's not comparable. Nowadays, like you have um, machinery, you know, yeah. ex excavating machinery and everything. So of it's course. not. It's, it's like a, a big, a big, build, a big uh, dam nowadays wouldn't compare to the work. It wouldn't take as many workers and as much time. Yeah, yeah. I sort of put that story in time. How would there have been fixed? For like the government needed money, right? So there was no ink, no PAYE as we know, right? Mm. So how were they able to assess these people for tax purposes? The workers were they taxed? Like, how I explain to you? Like, how were they able to get money off them? Or did Siemens pay a what? Taxes from all these employees that were there. How would it have worked out? Would you think? That's before my time, Tony. So I can't. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what, what would it, yeah. How would it have? How would it have affected the workers? You know. I'd imagine. I'd imagine the company would probably deduct some money and pay it over to the government. That, that probably was agreed before they came. You know, some. I said somebody thought of that. You know that. Yeah. That you get. You know, take I don't know, fifteen, twenty percent, and pay, hand it over to the government. Because otherwise, if, I know there's no PAYE, otherwise they would go back and you would never again see them, you know, mm. so you wouldn't get the money. You yeah. know. Yeah. If, it's just a problem now for that, yeah. you know. Yeah. It, if, if, even today for foreign workers coming to Ireland, there's a, a special way the companies, they, they have to pay up front, you know, there's a deduction. Yeah, yeah. To make sure. Yeah. Because, just, you know, that's, that's actually a very interesting uh, uh, question, uh, Tony, because which I never looked into, you know, whether the German mm. workers were taxed, you know, and maybe uh, there was an advantage to them if, if they weren't taxed, uh, which yeah. is, by the way, still the situation. If you mm. work for a company abroad, you do better, you know, you get... Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe they weren't taxed, and maybe that was the attraction. For yeah, them. it might be the attraction, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, like going to Dubai or Dubai now. Or, yeah, you know. exa exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And another question in that, that getting back to our negotiation, what... What was the, the overall cost and how was the money paid? Was it paid in stages? You know, the, the, the final the final month. What was the bill for it like? What was it, in other words, what was it contracted to cost? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 5.2 overall, but that, that also included the actual e electrification. And that's that's perhaps something that we we shouldn't forget, we always talk about Arden Krusha as the Shannon scheme, you know, but uh, there was an early phase of electrification, uh, the, 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 uh, building the power lines, you know, that was also uh, part of the, the project and Siemens was also uh, also involved in it now that, that uh, kind of started later. But uh, the, so the, the presence of the Germans uh, was not just in the uh, Arden, in Arden Krusha, uh, but they traveled all over the country. Now, that's, uh, they, they, I think, if I uh, remember correctly, the, um, 
uh, I think most of the uh, electrification was done by Irish teams, you know, but they're in the, mm. in the early phase, certainly in the uh, 1920s, early 1930s, uh, there were um, uh, German uh, teams uh, traveling as well and uh, uh, building the, the power lines. But to answer your, your question, Tony, as far as I know, it was built in stages and it had to be uh, signed off. And the, the, last, um, uh, uh, the last tranche was very controversial uh, because uh, um, uh, Siemens, the, uh, because they ran over time, not that much, but, uh, and uh, Siemens, uh, I think, justifiably made the point that uh, it was higher powers. No, there, there, there were major rainfalls and there was a mudslide uh, which delayed matters. I'm not sure whether Siemens should have been held responsible for that. And then there were the problems in training. Once again, uh, there were different positions uh, on, on uh, all this. Um, and uh, uh, Siemens had to make a call right at the end whether they would take the Irish government to court uh, or not. And uh, they decided it was not in their, their interest uh, to do it. They, whether they, some uh, lawyers in Siemens uh, um, thought they had a case, uh, but uh, in the end, I think they were very wise uh, uh, not to do it and, uh, uh, and effectively swallow the losses uh, uh, because in the long run they actually benefit I think from a from a PR from a PR, PR. perspective yeah. absolutely absolutely mm. uh, it, it would have been disastrous you know because yeah. the uh, the scheme uh, if you if you look at it it was an outright success and, and yeah. the, the uh, and also for the Irish government it was actually unbelievable you know that they yeah. they also uh, that they held such a big company as Siemens yeah. to their account and insisted uh, that uh, uh, the um, uh, that Siemens should uh, swallow the losses, so they really. Um, and how much? How much loss, very well, you know. How much loss? How much losses was in, How many losses? What was the amount involved? Uh, well, one million is the is the mm. overall uh, loss that which is a, a lot of calculated uh, in their fine. It's a, it's a lot on, on the overall cost, isn't it? it? Is, yeah, if mm. it was five point two overall, that's. Yeah. Massive loss, you know. And now they, yeah. um, uh, they, they did make some money in other areas, you know, but uh, the mm. overall, um, um, but yeah, overall, it was Siemens great. as a corporation was huge. I mean, that was the, the electric, electrical, uh, the hydroelectric part of their business was only one facet. I mean, they were a huge corporation, mm. you know, they're based in Berlin, Munich. Mm. Um, and but after the, after the, the Wall Street crash. Did they come back as, as big or did they downsize a bit? Yeah, no, uh, very, very, they came back very quickly and did well under the Nazis as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, which um, afterwards didn't, uh, obviously, yeah. uh, they, 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 uh, they worked with forced labor, as all of them did, you know, yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, from a um, uh, PR point of view, uh, their collaboration yeah. with the Nazis obviously oh, yeah. uh, mm. uh, was uh, yeah, yeah, dramatic yeah. afterwards, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, as I said, you know, in 1939, they they were the biggest electrical company in the world, you know. Mm. So uh, um, it's fascinating to go in now, world. even now, into our, into the, the, the into Anna Crusher and to see the Siemens name, you know. Mm. And the big generators in there, you know, to see yeah. Siemens written on them. Because yeah. they had an outing to the, to at the Crusher, the Historical yeah. Society, about God, it would be four years ago now, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. An outing there. And yeah. it's very interesting to see, with a great attendance now, just yeah. to see it as it is now. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. it's a pity that it has kind of lost its prominence. Like, it's only producing, I think, about 3% of the electricity. Yeah, 2%. Yeah, really, yeah. And it's uh, fully automatic it's now. Really, you know, yeah. they, uh, mm. We don't even need to have... Uh, it's a busy model. But, but I, I, I think, as, as you say, uh, Tony, a visit to it is well worth uh, 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 to, to anybody. And uh, also tourists, you know, uh, because it, it has a... Uh, as an industrial plant, uh, I think it has a beauty. It has a certain yeah. aesthetic, you know, the, uh, the engine room. And when you hear the, the uh, uh, turbines humming, uh, it has, it's a special place, I think. Mm. You know, uh, and uh, like we're coming up, we're coming up to the centenary now. And it's, yeah, um, yeah it, you know, it's something, uh, it's, it's, I think it's, a lot of people forget about it, you know. Yeah. 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 About four years ago, a friend of mine took me on a boat at Lysid. 
right up from we came from Carberry, right up, or oh, it was eerie up underneath. Yeah. Look at, I said, get me out of here. You know, yeah. it was eerie to be up in underneath. You know, yeah. to see the height. Yeah. The height yeah. Of you know, in a small boat, I just wanted to get out and go home. You know, but uh, but just, there was there was another knock on. Um, uh, like which would take another program, but uh, a lot of fishermen, mm-hmm. even right down to the to the amount of the estuary, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who had salmon weirs had to be compensated mm-hmm. because when the water flow was interrupted, uh, mm-hmm. the weirs were no longer like the the fish weren't there because yeah. the, they couldn't go upstream to spawn and yeah. Um, yeah. It had a huge effect. The, the water, you know, um, and for, strangely enough, there was never any. Um, like in Cork with the hydroelectric station, there's a lot of flooding because of the, you know, they're interrupting the water flow and and, re- and releasing it then, and mm. you know, uh, which causes problems in Cork. Mm. I know Cork is different to Limerick, but luckily in Limerick there was never any um, major flooding because of. Uh, about three years well, ago, it was in Clonlara, wasn't there? Or you, yeah, yeah, well, it was, yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah. But you, but, water then, but, but you also have flooding up up around that low and place like that. Yeah. But but you wonder like if the hydroelectric station wasn't there, would it be flooding anyway? You know, well, I mean that's absolutely that's that's true. And uh, yeah. uh, but um, the uh, you you mentioned uh, mentioned the fishing, um, uh, Tom. Uh, I also it, it it seems to have affected tourism generally because uh, as far as I know, the Dunas Falls were a major tourist attraction in yeah. here. Now, I haven't seen pictures of it before the, uh, the yeah. power station was built, yeah. but apparently uh, they must have been spectacular. Yeah. And looking at them now, uh, yeah. they aren't very much it's, now. You know, brings us, uh, brings us on to another uh, yeah. in, of your interest, you know, tourism and the travel writing, which is yeah. fascinating, you know. Um, like you mentioned the book, uh, J- um, JJ, what's his name? Uh, the, the, the Compendium of Travel Writing, uh, and like, J. J. Woods. You, Woods. oh, yeah. JJ Woods, Woods, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, you, you have a particular interest in German travel writers, do you reckon? I have, yes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, well, actually, travel writing both ways, uh, I was very interested in this Limerick lady who traveled Germany, uh, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, Mary Frans- uh, Maria Frances Dixon, uh, Dixon yeah. but also uh, also the other way. And I had, uh, if somebody's interested, I, I, I uh, have a little piece in the um, uh, Tipperary Historical Journal about an Austrian who uh, visited Ballina and Killaloo and wrote a very interesting uh, uh, account of it. You know, I translated it into English that, that mm. appeared uh, two two years ago. But I. That's true. Uh, uh, travel writing is, uh, is fascinating, and particularly the, uh, the travel writing in other languages yeah. uh, is often forgotten. And uh, mm. outsiders very often, not only in Ireland, but anywhere, see yeah. more. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, they do, yeah. Other, the strangers' uh, gaze. Perspective and uh, yeah. see things that and particularly, I, I wouldn't even notice. Think, you know? Particularly what you're saying there about, say, German writers writing for home. They're not, they're not writing for a tourism point of view. They're writing, or they may be, but they're not writing colorfully for, to, to make a point. They're telling the people back home, look, this is what I've seen here, you know, and giving them the, you know, the stranger's gaze. Like, and quite often, somebody coming into country first time or new can have a far better perspective rather than people who are living there all the time, you know. Mm. Uh, so, like, it's interesting from that point of view. Strangers' gaze, you mentioned now, Tom. I was come across that, uh, like um, the Strangers' gaze. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a fascinating book to read. Mm. What people thought of what this, what what the sound when they opened their eyes in a village or a town, you know. And it's a pity that was never done for Limerick, actually. Well, there, like, there was yeah. kind of a there was a minor one by Kelly, but it's not not as good. Yeah. 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 Only that's that's only a question of time. It just uh, yeah. takes a few people to get together and uh, put an anthology yeah. together. You know, uh, yeah. it, it, it should be done. There are really very interesting uh, travel accounts about Limerick. Uh, you, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you both know. More. But see, I, I, the trouble, the trouble with Limerick, like with what I found about Limerick was uh, young and people like that. They they went down the estuary on a boat and landed landed at Tarbert and visited Kerry. And apart from uh, Commenting on the on the river as they went by, 
there was little enough, you know. Uh, little end, yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah. That is a problem. And yeah. also, the, the majority of them stayed in big houses. Like, yeah. famous composer, Carolyn, wrote mm -hmm. all these songs for all the gentry, you know, mm -hmm. houses. Of course, there again, there was no one else would give them shelter, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They had to have an invitation anyway. Usually, mm -hmm. they were invited mm -hmm. by somebody, or some of them gave them a letter of, uh, mm -hmm. what would you call it, a forwarding letter, like, yeah, to say, yeah. Hey, come and visit. Mm -hmm. the, but, yeah, I, I don't know if this guy's name right now, De, De La Tuckin, the De French writer. Yeah. De La Tuckin, yeah. 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 He, he, had lots of, he had letters of introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, that, that that can be kind of jaundiced, his view, because he really can't say anything bad about the area if he's been... No, that's what I'm saying. They stayed in the big houses, you see. And mm. they talk about getting good food and good wine. Yeah. But I told you about the, the tenant farmer. Mm. But some of them, but the majority of them don't mention the tenant farmer. You know, yeah. they mention Limerick as a lovely city, the Georgian city, lovely buildings. And I visited the bishop in Limerick, who would be mm. the Church of Ireland bishop. And you know, mm -hmm. never mention that there's another bishop as well. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. a lot of them kind of say over things. But uh, you you do get others as well, like mm. uh, Friedrich Engels, for example, a uh, collaborator yeah. of Karl Marx. Yeah. You know, he visited Ireland as well. Yeah. And he has a completely different perspective. You know, yeah. The 1850s, straight after the famine, you know, so yeah. he effectively only sees the misery, you know, yeah. and. Uh, so you you get that as well. Yeah. Well, that was the Frank McCord version, but they, <laughs> they, they but they like well, there are ho horrific descriptions of Limerick. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, there's been a few in the Autumn Journal and the mm -hmm. squalor and the, the conditions oh. people are living in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was just like the lanes and the back streets, uh, mm -hmm. and th well, th that counterbalances the writers Tony's talking about that stayed in big houses and only talked mm -hmm. about the gentry, mm -hmm. but. Um, like you're right. I mean, there's a there's a plethora of of travel writing out there, which mm. could be you know, and like the, like Kelly's book was only kind of a snap mm. a snapshot, yeah, you know, yeah. Little, uh, yeah. of, of that, you know, absolutely. Uh, but um, and, it's and very interesting to read on what what the people saw, but then it's very hard to keep it into context. So people kind of can't imagine to this bell. It's like when Frank McCourt wrote. I often told people that Frank McCourt's book is eighty percent true. I do believe that. 10% mm -hmm. of it, he couldn't possibly have remembered. And there's yeah, another 10% yeah. we put in by the publishers to kind of mm -hmm. use it up a bit, you know. Yeah. But traditions were, a lot of the things he said in were true. You could argue whether he told lies or whether he didn't mention this or didn't mention that, but the yeah. conditions were true. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I remember them even myself in the late 50s, some of the conditions. Like yeah. Limerick expanded really from this, the middle 60s onwards. You know, mm. Limerick was very compact up to mm. the city. Yeah. I mean, there was like Castle Troy. I mean, the, the White House outside Castle Troy, that was miles outside the city. You know, mm. people don't realize that. It was yeah. so far out. You yeah. know, where you accept it now, you could walk it out, out to, out to Anacotti, you know, but you wouldn't have walked it out 40 years ago. You know, yeah. Yeah. like another yeah. wall out there, you know. But the, 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 the travel writers to Germany from Ireland, uh, were there many of them? You yeah, mean, there are a good yeah. few. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> was, uh, were they on the grand tour or were they just, did they go? Uh, well, the early ones were, yeah. 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 Uh, later on, uh, you you have a number of uh, different travelers like uh, Maria Frances Dixon, uh, the, mm. uh, the woman I mentioned before, who is, uh, by the way, the first uh, Irish woman who published an extensive travel account about Germany. Um, and yeah. And she was uh, from uh, Limerick, which is very interesting to... Uh, so my neighbor. My neighbor. Oh, Sorry? My neighbor. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor, my neighbor. exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the Dixons, indeed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, and then you have a good few uh, priests later on who go to Oberammergau, you know, to the yeah. Passion Plays. Um, yeah. and, um, uh, and then, um, well closer to our time, you have a good few writers who um, uh, traveled uh, Germany. Colm Tobin wrote a very interesting uh, piece about um, Germany. And then Hugo Hamilton, most recently, uh, he has several yeah. novels uh, about uh, Germany. But uh, just uh, um, the... Um, he, he, he lives in Germany, doesn't he? Sorry? He lives in Germany, doesn't he? Hugo Hamilton. He, yeah, nowadays. His, his mother yeah, was yeah. German and uh, yeah, he yeah. spent yeah. his time between Ber Berlin and, mm. uh, and Dublin. But yeah. Uh, on the, uh, the travel writing and Frank McCourt, the, the, the last point perhaps uh, is um, 
the famous uh, travel account by Heinrich Böll, uh, the um, Irish diary, uh, uh, came out in 1957. He has uh, two chapters on Limerick in it. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, they, they are based on visits in 54, right? And uh, you should read them. He had no uh, reason to make up anything. You know, uh, there, there are children barefoot in the, in the city, you know, uh, barefoot in the city. Well, that's, that, that's there's, photographic strong, evidence, you know? there's photographic evidence of that, of yeah, children, yeah, yeah. In, even in the 60s and 70s, school yeah. photographs. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah
uh, devil era and, and yeah. the development, like because it was yeah. England's problem, Britain, Britain's problem was our, our opportunity, and yeah, that was, yeah. you know, so, it, there, was a, there was a bit of that in it as well, apart yeah, yeah, from, exactly, absolutely. And absolutely. like, I know, yeah. and looking back then, yeah. I mean, the Nazi, like for, for all the horrors of the Nazi era, yeah, there was, I mean, the organization and the, the actual, the, 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 um, you know, the, the, the what let's say, the, you know, the regime itself. Like yeah. was was very well run, you know. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. Like maybe maybe some of it was through fear, yeah. which was, yeah. you know, it was. Uh, oh yeah, but that's like with all with Napoleon and like the French Revolution mm. as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Raspier, Raspier, I mean, he ran some ship in in France, you know, mm. and he knew what what needed to be done. Was you know after that when they when they beheaded the king and queen, yeah. was, uh, had the same problem in England. Mm. Yeah. What were yeah. going to do? Where was money going to come from? How were people going to be fed? You know, mm. when the king was and gone. Just, just on a, on a modern thing, Jerkham. Are there any? Do any German students come to UL now? I mean, oh, people, loads students, of them. Sorry, yes, students yeah. from student, students from Germany. Not, not yeah, 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 yeah. A good few yeah. now. We have yeah. uh, um, UL has uh, the most extensive Erasmus exchange scheme. Uh, among all the Irish universities, you know, we yeah. exchange most students, and um, many uh, Irish students go to Germany as well. You know, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's mm. it's a very vibrant exchange at the moment. And yeah, um, and is it all it, over? Is it all over Germany? Yeah, or? all over Germany. We have yeah. uh, loads of link all, all over the place. But what is interesting, uh, perhaps that that's a good point to finish up with, how few uh, of uh, the Irish students uh, know anything about Art and Crusher. Yeah, uh, they, they, uh, when we talk about, I always mention it in my, my classes yeah. uh, we, we, where I have one particular class where I talk about Irish-German connections, you know, and I, uh, I, I realized after a few years when I say Shannon scheme, it actually doesn't mean uh, no. very much to young people oh. nowadays, you know. But, uh, but welcome, that, they that don't goes even back know where Art and Crusher is, you know. No, no but that goes I find that like Tony goes into schools more than I do, mm. but I just go to schools, and the lack of education in from a historical point of view yeah. is, is frightening. You yeah. know, yeah. That, yeah. Be, be, like if you ask them who was the first president of Ireland, or you know, yeah. unless the teacher has, you know, it's not just uh, the crush it, yeah, uh, a blind a blind spot for historically, yeah. you know, and yeah. even right, right up to secondary school, they're yeah. not doing the uh, yeah. history because it's such a vast subject, and Absolutely. Yeah. you know, so yeah. yeah. But that's a that's a broader, yeah. Um, so you're you're flying the flag for the Crusher. I, <laughs> I am, yes, yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, gearing should... myself up for the the big uh, um, centenary. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure yeah. that will be a major event. You know, oh and yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, 2025 want... when it started. I want to thank you for coming on, I think. Hmm? I want to thank you for coming on, I'm saying. And about thank him. you very much for the invitation, Tony. I really yeah. appreciate it. I always love talking about it and uh, yeah. talking to you and Tom as well. We have, uh, and the scene was, as I said at the beginning of the program, they're still out there making vacuum cleaners and a few other things. You don't and Tony, to Tony, you might, you might just remind people how they can hook up to, to the pro other programs. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, I should tell you, this is a part of the, of the Limerick Historical Society, and uh, we're always looking for members. And they can contact me through the through the website. We have a website out the Limerick Historical Society. And if you want to see these programs, they're all available on the site or on Lear.media.tv uh, Lear or on YouTube. Just put my name in or put in Lear, Lear, Lear into the, the thing. And I just L I R. And don't forget to subscribe. There's a subscribe button down in the corner of the screen. You just subscribe, it just gives us an idea of how many are listening. Uh, anyway, you like we we'll talk again and thank you very talk much. Talk again. Thank yeah. you. Thank 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 you.